The last thing we're going to look at for how to draw Lewis dot structures is for how to draw a structure for a polyatomic ion, a group of atoms that have a charge. So when drawing structures for ions, you'll either have extra electrons in your picture if it's an anion, or we'll take some electrons away if you have a cation. So when you have an anion where there's extra electrons in your picture, how do you know which element to give the extra electrons to? Generally speaking, you're gonna give the extra electrons to the element with the higher electronegativity because if it has a high electronegativity value, then it can attract those electrons very well in a bond. So your high electronegativity values tend to be in that upper right-hand corner of the periodic table. So the closer you get to fluorine, the better it does at attracting those electrons. If you have a cation, that means you're taking an electron away from your picture. So how do you know which element you're gonna take the electron away from? Generally speaking, we're gonna take the electron away from the elements that have low ionization energies. Elements where you don't have to work very hard to take the electron away because it's the easiest to remove. Elements with low ionization energies tend to be on the left-hand side of the periodic table because they have low effective nuclear charges and closer to the bottom of the periodic table because the radius is very large. So these guys, where francium is on the periodic table, have the lowest coulombic attractions and are therefore easiest to remove electrons from. So let's look at this example, SH minus. So S by itself would have six electrons. It's in the 6A family. And H would have one valence electron. The SH minus, the minus means that we've got an extra electron somewhere in our picture. So we have to decide, do we give the extra electron to the H or to the S? Because S has a higher electronegativity, can attract electrons better than hydrogen can, I'm going to give that extra electron to my sulfur. I put it uh, the extra electron in a different color just so you can see that our S that would normally have six now has seven. We'll bond those guys together. Your S now has eight electrons surrounding it. Your H now has two. So we know that we're done with our picture. The one thing we have to add is that we would put this guy in brackets with a little minus or a minus one on the outside of it to indicate that we've added an extra electron to our picture. If we have a cation, like the hydronium ion, H3O+, plus, we draw that as symmetrically as we can. And I'm gonna draw each element the way we normally would. Hydrogens get one, oxygens get six. So we have to take away one electron from our picture because it's H3O plus. It's an implied plus one if you don't see a number. So who do we take the electron away from? One of the hydrogens or the oxygen? we're gonna take it away from hydrogen because between those two elements, hydrogen would have the lower ionization energy. It would be easier to remove an electron from hydrogen than oxygen. So I'm gonna take away this bottom hydrogen's electron. So this guy will bond to the hydrogen on the left and then one on the right. And you can see that oxygen in the center has eight. It's already, a complete octet rule as it is. But we somehow have to get that hydrogen on the bottom to attach despite the fact that it has absolutely nothing to contribute. So what's gonna happen is this lone pair of electrons on the bottom of the oxygen, I'm just gonna turn them so it turns into a vertical up and down instead of a left right and make a bond out of that. And both of those electrons came from the O, neither came from the H. So I'm gonna draw one of those arrows there to indicate that that hydrogen did not contribute to that bond. It's a coordinate covalent bond. We put this in brackets 
and now we're done.